This is the mini lecture on evaluation, the final step in the seven step instructional design process for online learning. Really though, formative evaluation has been going on throughout your process. Let's start with definitions. Let's define the two parts of the evaluation process, formative evaluation and summative evaluation. In a nutshell, Formative evaluation happens during the design and development process with the purpose of informing decision making regarding revisions and improvements to instruction. Summative evaluation happens after instruction has been implemented with the purpose of determining the worth or value of a course or program. Now we'll dig deeper into both of these components of Step 7 of our 7-step approach. Formative evaluation provides informative feedback during the instructional design process in order to improve your methods and materials before you fully implement your instruction. For example, the D4L series in which you are participating now has undergone many revisions as a result of the initial trials with several cohorts of participants. This helped to guide our decision making with regard to how we could improve the program for future participants like you. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, formative evaluation should be ongoing throughout the process as you continuously review and modify your instructional design plan. Last week we mentioned that instead of developing all your instructional materials at once in step 6, you might want to develop a part of your instruction and then test it with a few individuals who are similar to your target learners. Your purpose would be to discover whether the materials were clear and understandable if the instruction seemed relevant to the intended learning outcomes, if time allocated to synchronous activities were sufficient. You could ask whether learners found the instruction to be appealing and motivating. What you learn from the feedback you receive can help you improve your instructional design before you commit to creating or accessing all the materials you'll eventually need. For larger budget training programs, the next step is often a field trial of an entire training program or course with a substantial number of participants. And these participants must fairly represent the targeted learning audience. Field trials are best conducted in the same or very similar conditions to the intended context. This way, you can evaluate the effectiveness of the learning activities that require group participation, as well as all of your learning objects. How well students perform as a whole on your learning assessments will also contribute to the big picture of how effective your course or unit of instruction is. After making all the improvements that your field tests suggested were necessary, your instruction should be ready for the real learners. That's formative evaluation. In part two of this week's instruction, we'll address summative evaluation. I'll see you very soon.